Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another day of learning. Welcome to Institute of Global Professional C International Webinar. Thank you all for joining with us in this marvelous session. And I am Kamal, coordinator of IGP from Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be associated with IGP as a global member. and i feel honored to host this webinar and it's my delight to welcome you all to our institution on global professional p international webinar once again thank you again all for joining with us in this session and i hope you stay with us till the program ends and time to time you like our facebook page and subscribe our youtube channel for upcoming information Before we have completed our 820 webinar successfully, now I will be presenting webinar number 823, and the topic is stress management and simple coping strategies. Today we have a speaker from Philippines. Today our speaker name is Mary Esther Clyde. She is a registered author and a writer. She is also certified. high impact inspirational speaker and she is certified human resource associate and finally she is a certified research consultant let's we welcome our speaker to the screen hello hello ma'am hi good evening ma'am Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening to all our audience all over the world. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, give a short description about yourself before starting the program. I request you to share your screen. Okay. Um, I'm about to share my um PowerPoint okay. now, right? Yes. Yes. Ma Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes, ma'am, make it full screen. Okay, ma'am. Okay, how about now? Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, good evening everyone. Um tonight I'm going to discuss with you about stress management and coping strategies through positive psychology. By the way, let me introduce myself. My name is Mary Easter Clare as Paris Torres. I'm a graduate of BS Psychology, MA in Clinical Psychology, and I'm currently pursuing my PhD in Educational Psychology. I'm also a licensed teacher, psychometrician, and psychologist, and I am a faculty member of the University of Perpetual Health Systems Laguna and College of Arts and Sciences and Psychology Department. So before we start with our discussion, I would like to invite everyone to take a short quiz with me. So this is the scale that we will be using. If you think that the statement applies to you and you strongly agree with it, okay, just write down seven. Maybe if you have a notepad or a pen, you can use that. And also, um, if it it's not if you don't strongly agree to it, like if you only agree. You uh you may actually choose six, um five for slightly agree, four for neither agree nor disagree, three for slightly disagree, two disagree, and one for strongly disagree. Okay, so let's begin. For the first statement, in most ways, my life is close to my ideal. Okay, you just try to remember. your answers for each statement okay and then later you're going to add all your answers to get the score second statement the condition of the conditions of my life are excellent third statement i am satisfied with my life Okay, number four. So far, I have gotten the important things I want in life. 
And the last one, if I could live my life over, I would change almost nothing. Okay, now I want you to add all your answers. And let's see. Okay, so if your score falls between 31 to 35, it means that you are extremely satisfied with your life. If your score falls between 26 to 30, it means that you are satisfied with your life. How about 21 to 25? It means you are slightly satisfied. If your score is flat 20, it means you're neutral. And then 15 to 19, it means you are slightly dissatisfied. 10 to 14 means you are dissatisfied. And 5 to 9 means you are extremely, extremely dissatisfied with your life. And I hope you didn't fall under those scores. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not sure uh, as to what your scores are, but maybe the daily news you hear and read nowadays are affecting your life situation. Why it makes it even more sad is that many of us are experiencing unemployment, lack of social, uh, lack of actual socialization since the pandemic, right? Students being out of school, poverty, illnesses, and that also one of the um, the biggest problem nowadays is mental health issues. Let's talk about depression. Depression is a common mental disorder and globally there are more than 264 million people of all ages suffering from depression. Try to imagine that. that this is according to the World Health Organization in 2020. Depression is a leading cause of disability worldwide and is a major contributor to the overall global burden of disease. Also, in terms of gender, depression is, a more, co is more common among females than males. So more women are affected by depression than men. And actually, suicide is the second leading cause of death globally in uh, people between uh, ages 15 to 29 years old. And as we know it, depression can actually lead to suicide. So there are effective psychological and pharmacological treatments for uh, severe and moderate depression. However, not everyone have the access to it or can afford it. In a recent study during the early phase of the pandemic in the Philippines, one fourth of respondents reported moderate to severe anxiety and one sixth reported moderate to severe depression and psychological impact. So the factors identified can be used to devise effective psychological support strategies. This according to one study about the psychological impact of COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines. And why am I saying all this? It's, is it making you feel depressed now? Well, I just want to uh, emphasize that pessimism is actually trouble because it's bad for your health. Numerous studies have shown that optimists are physically and psychologically healthier than pessimists. Understanding mental illness is not really the key here. This is not a lecture on abnormal psychology that will help you understand what are the various psychological disorders. Actually, what I'm here for is to introduce to you Dr. Martin Seligman. He is a pioneer of positive psychology. The term itself was coined by Abraham Maslow, and not simply because he has a systematic theory about why happy people are happy but because he uses the scientific method to explore it. 
Now, let me tell you what is positive psychology that I am gagging about. It is the scientific study of the strengths that enable individuals to and communities to thrive. It is the field that is founded on the belief that people want to lead meaningful and fulfilling lives to cultivate what is best within themselves and to enhance their experiences of love, work, and play. Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania has actually conducted extensive research on the topic. Seligman worked with researchers from Dartmouth and the University of Michigan on a study uh, that followed people from ages 25 to 65 to see how their levels of pessimism or optimism influenced their overall health. So this is a longitudinal research wherein they have to really observe what will happen to these people from the age 25 until they reach the age of 65 and see whether these people who are optimistic and pessimistic will have a problem with their health in the future. And the researchers found that pessimist health deteriorated far more rapidly as they age. Now, keeping a positive attitude isn't just good for your health. Martin Seligman has also studied the connection between positivity and performance. In one study, he measured the degree to which insurance salespeople were optimistic or pessimistic in their work. And do you know what they found out? <clears throat> they found out that optimistic salespeople sold 37% more policies than pessimists who were actually twice as likely to leave the company during their first year of employment. So it really pays to be optimistic, right? Now Seligman has studied positivity more than anyone, and he believes in the ability to turn pessimistic thoughts and tendencies around with simple effort and know-how. But you know what? Seligman doesn't just believe this. His research shows that people can transform a tendency toward pessimistic thinking into positive thinking through simple techniques that create lasting changes in behavior long after they are discovered. And what did they find out? Now, researchers at Yale and the University of Colorado found that pessimism is associated with a weakened immune response to tumors and infections. And this is really sad, of course, because thinking that you already have that kind of disease, what can you do? Should you lurk to depression because you have it? Or maybe try something else? Maybe try a different approach, right? Now, researchers from the University of Kentucky went so far as to inject optimists and pessimists with a virus to measure their immune response. And this is quite controversial because it was, you know, unethical. But the researchers found that optimists had a much stronger immune response than pessimists. It only goes to show that optimism can actually help someone to have a better fighting chance against any illnesses. Now, maintaining positivity is a daily challenge that, you know, requires focus and attention. You have to be intentional about it. You have to really want to stay positive if you're going to overcome the brain's tendency to focus on threats. Now, let me teach you about PERMA model of well-being. Okay, PERMA stands for positive emotions, E for engagement, R for relationships, M for meaning, and A for accomplishment. The PERMA model makes up well-being theory where each dimension actually works in concert to give rise to a higher order construct that predicts the flourishing of groups, 
communities, organizations, and nations. Now, research shown that uh, significant positive associations between each of the PERMA components and physical health, vitality, job satisfaction, life satisfaction, and commitment within organizations. PERMA also a better predictor of psychological distress and previous reports of distress. And this means that proactively working on the components of PERMA not only increases aspects of well-being, but also decreases psychological distress. Now let's go one by one. Okay, let's start with positive emotion. Positive emotion is much more than mere happiness. Positive emotions include hope, interest, joy, love, compassion, pride, amusement, and gratitude. Positive emotions are a prime indicator of flourishing, and they can be cultivated or learned to improve well-being. How do we build positive emotion? Well, it includes very simple things like spending time with people you care about whether it's your family or friends or your loved ones do activities that you enjoy like pick a hobby try new things maybe enhance your skills listen to uplifting or inspirational music okay think of something that you know that you or think of a song that you think can get your day high like make you feel happier also reflect on things you are grateful for and what is going well in your life so think of things that are good that is happening in your life emphasize on it okay like for example think that be thankful that you're still alive be thankful that you're still breathing and you have a house and a roof on top of your head and you got food and your family. <clears throat> now, letter E stands for engagement. According to Seligman, engagement being one with is being one with the music. It is in line with um, Chicken Miali's concept of flow. Okay, flow includes the loss of self consciousness and complete absorption in an activity. In other words, it is living in the present moment and focusing entirely on the task at hand. Flow or this concept of engagement occurs when the perfect combination of challenge and skills or strength is found. So, do you have that flow? Are you engaged? How do we increase engagement? We can participate in activities that you really love, where you lose track of time when you do them. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so how can we increase our engagement? You may participate in activities that you really love, where you lose track of time when you do them. Also, you may practice living in the moment even during daily activities or mundane tasks. You may also spend time in nature, watching, listening, and observing what happens around you. You may identify and learn about your character strengths and do things that you excel at. So basically, this is really easy, right? I think all of us can actually do it. Next is our relationships. But take note, not just a relationship, okay? It has to be positive relationships. 
Relationships encompass all the various interactions individuals have with partners, friends, family members, colleagues, bosses, mentors, supervisors, and their community at large. So relationships in the PERMA model refer to feeling supported, loved, and valued by others. Okay, so if you if you don't feel these things that I mentioned, it means that it is not a positive relationship. Relationships, <coughs> sorry. Relationships are included in the model based on the idea that humans are inherently social creatures. There is evidence of this everywhere, but social connections become particularly important as we of course, as we age. How do we build positive relationships? Okay, you may try to join a class or group that interests you. Ask questions of the people you don't know well. <coughs> Sorry. I'm sure there are a lot of people around you who you don't know well and um, you can spend time with and ask questions about. <coughs> Sorry. You may also create friendships with people you are acquainted with. <clears throat> and get in touch with people you have not spoken to or connected to within a while. <clears throat> Letter M. <clears throat> Meaning. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Meaning, it is another intrinsic human quality, um, which is the search for meaning, and we need to have a sense of value and worth. <clears throat> Seligman in 2012 discussed meaning as belonging and or serving something greater than ourselves. Having a corpus in life helps individuals Focus on what is really important in the face of significant challenge or adversity. <clears throat> so what gives your life meaning? You may get involved in a cause or organization that matters to you. You try new creative activities to find things you connect with. You think about how you can use your passions to help others. And also you can spend quality time with people you care about. Next is accomplishment. Accomplishment in PERMA is also known as achievement, mastery, or, in, or having competence. A sense of accomplishment is a result of working toward and reaching goals, mastering an endeavor, and having um, self-motivation <clears throat> to finish what you set out to do. And this contributes to well-being because individuals can look at their lives with a sense of pride. Now, how can we build accomplishment? You may set goals that are SMART. When we say SMART, it has to be specific, measurable, <clears throat> achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Also, you have to reflect on past successes, like what are the things that I have accomplished so far? What are the good things that I've done that I was uh, recognized to? And then look for creative ways to celebrate your achievements. It can be anything. It can be like, since I was able to finish my report, I will uh, buy myself a nice dress <laughs> that is just you know it doesn't have to be grand it doesn't have to be expensive no the plus in perma pertains to positivity or optimism nutrition physical activities and sleep which are actually the things that we need to have a better uh, or to have a good life work balance now i want to share this video to you but i don't think it's going to play 
But this is about a man who was able to combat cancer with uh, using only humor. Okay, let me try to share it with you. <coughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, can you hear it? Is it audible? Is it audible? Sorry. Okay, let me try again. Share screen. <coughs> okay, share system audio. Okay. There you go. Okay, so that is um, the video of this guy who actually um, survived cancer uh, with only sense of humor. Okay, let me share my lecture again. Okay, so to go back to this note, let me just give you a few things that I'll be doing this year that you may actually try to apply to you if you think that this is beneficial, of course. Okay, so of course, to stay positive. One is, of course, you have to separate fact from fiction. Okay, the first step in learning to focus on the positive requires knowing how to stop negative self-talk in its tracks. So the more you ruminate on negative thoughts, the more power you give them. Most of our negative thoughts are just that, thoughts. They're not facts. Okay, so when it feels like something always or never happens, this is just your brain's natural threat tendency inflating the perceived frequency or severity of an event. Now, identifying and labeling your thoughts as thoughts by separating them from the facts will help you escape the cycle of negativity and move toward a positive new outlook. Okay, hold on. Now, what happened? Okay, let me just go back to it. Okay. Now, number two, you have to identify a positive. Once you snap yourself out of self-defeating negative thoughts, it's time to help your brain learn what you want it to focus on, which is actually the positive. So once you have identified a positive thought, draw your attention to that. Each time you find yourself dwelling on the negative, think about the positive thought. Magnify on it. Think about it every single minute. Like, I have to, uh, this is something good that I'm thinking about right now, and I have to dwell on it. So if that proves difficult, you can repeat the process of writing down the negative thoughts to discredit their validity and then allow yourself to freely enjoy positive thoughts. Number three, you have to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. You take time to contemplate what you're grateful for. Is it merely the right thing to do? It reduces the stress hormone cortisol by 23%. So think of the good things that you have right now. And that deserves, think 
uh, gratefulness. Okay, something that you are really thankful for having. Research conducted at the University of California, um, Davis, found that people who work daily to cultivate an attitude of gratitude experience improved mood, energy, and substantially less anxiety due to lower cortisol levels. So anytime you experience negative or pessimistic thoughts, use this as a cue to shift gears and think about something positive. In time, a positive attitude will become a way of life. Okay, now here's a few simple self-care strategies that I would like to share to you. Take care of your body. How? Get enough sleep. Do a regular physical activity. Eat healthy. Avoid tobacco, alcohol, and drugs. Limit your screen time. Also, take care of your mind. Keep your regular routine. Limit exposure to news media. Focus on positive thoughts. Use your moral compass. Set priorities and also connect with others. Make connections. Look for new people that you can connect with. Do something for others. Support a family member or a friend. I know it is not easy, but you have to start somehow. And you have to choose to want to have a positive life. Life is a series of baby steps. Okay. Now let's try this short exercise to lessen the stress that you are experiencing right now. Okay. Now I hope that all of you will focus on my voice. Okay. Just try your best to listen to what I'm going to say. Okay. Now people, I want you to Find a comfortable position, whether sitting or lying down. I want you to notice how you are feeling right now, both physically and mentally. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose and release the breath through your mouth. Take another breath and allow your breathing to relax as you exhale fully. Breathe in gently, and as you breathe out, let the air carry the tension out of your body. Continue to breathe slowly and gently as you begin to focus on relaxing your body. Notice where your body stands. Focus your attention on one of, the, one of these areas. As you breathe, picture that part of your body becoming slightly more relaxed than it was before. With each breath, that part of your body becomes a little more relaxed. Imagine what the relaxation feels like. Tingly, soft, gentle, calm, loose, free. And let that feeling of relaxation grow. Scan your body for any areas of tension. And for each area, let the relaxation soften the muscles as they give up their hold. Let the feeling of relaxation grow, spreading calm throughout your body. Breathe in relaxation and breathe out tension. Breathe in calm and let all the, all the attention, all the tension go as you exhale. Continue to breathe slowly and gently. Deepening your state of relaxation more and more with each breath. Deeper and deeper, more and more relaxed, calm, at peace. Now begin to create a picture in your mind. Imagine a place where you feel completely at ease. And this might be your favorite place, a place where you have been. 
or somewhere you have seen, or it might be completely imaginary. It's up to you. Picture this place where you feel happy and calm. Create the details about this place in your mind. Visualize the sights, the sounds and smells of your place. Imagine how you feel physically. You are comfortable enjoying the pleasant temperature, enjoying being still and relaxing or doing whatever enjoyable activities you participate in here. Enjoy the way you feel in this safe place. You feel calm and safe here, at peace with yourself. Remain in your peaceful place while you meditate calmly. Okay, so we will cut it for now. You may now open your eyes. Well, let me just remind you this, that you cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. And that is from the words of Miss Joyce Mayer. Also, the less you respond to negativity, the more peaceful your life becomes. So that will be all, and thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am, for your marvelous presentation. I am also trying this short exercise. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And now we are going to our quiz competition, and after that we come back again with our Q and A session. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dear participants, now we are going to our quiz competition and today our quiz code is quiz ISB. Let's we enjoy our quiz video. Dear lovely participants, this is our quiz session time. You can join this session by slido.com. And you have to give the code, and the code is quiz IZP. Then you can join this session. You can also scan our QR code from the screen to join this live quiz session. And today, top 15 quiz competition winners get their quiz certificate after the session from our official Facebook page. Our Facebook page address is Institute of Global Professionals. I remind you that there is no relationship between quiz completion certificate and free international webinar certificate. After our Q&A, we share our international webinar certificate code. So I request everyone to join with your full name, which will directly paint on your quiz certificate.
to join this quiz session you have to go to slido.com and after that you have to put the code and the code is quiz igp after one minute later we start our quiz competition so join the hurry up and mention your friends in the comment box to join this live quiz session Now, sixty-three participants already joined with us. To join this session, you have to go to any Chrome or any other browser, and after that, you have to go to slido.com and put the code, and the code is quiz IGT. Then you can join this quiz session. After thirty seconds later, we will start our quiz competition. Dear participants, we have started our quiz competition now, so be ready. Our first question is: Stress is something that can be managed with proper coping strategies. That statement is true or false? Option number one: The statement is true. Our next question is: What is stress management? Is it finding a way to control and relieve stress, or forgetting about the stress you have? Option number one: Finding a way to control and relieve stress is the right answer. Our next question is: Not all stress is bad. The statement is true or false. Option number one: The statement is true. Our next question is: What is stress? Is it the body's way of hunting itself, or a reaction of the body and mind to a silence or threat? Option number two: A reaction of the body and mind to a silence or threat. Is that right answer? Next question is: There are two forms of stress known as fight or flight. Another one is acute or chronic. Option number two, acute and chronic, is the right answer. Our next question is: Drinking water can reduce the effect of stress. The statement is true or false?
that statement is true our next question is emotional examples of stress symptoms include headache and shortness of breath and the other one is hostility and depression option number 2 hostility and depression is the right answer our next question is the stress response is defined as dash is it a psychological imbalance that can be measured or psychological symptoms that can be felt option number 1 as psychological imbalance that can be measured is the right answer our next question is a term for negative stress is distress or abnormal stress Question number one: Distress is the right answer. Our last question is: A stress experience for long periods of time can cause someone to be very calm or cause chronic stress. option number 2 cause chronic stress is the right answer thank you everyone for your active participation in the quiz competition and congratulation of our top 10 quiz competition winners top 10 quiz competition winners get their certificate after the session from our official facebook page our facebook page address is institute of global professionals thank you everyone now we are going to our q and a session after a short video quiz we come back again welcome back ma'am hello welcome <laughs> dear participants this is our even a session time you can send your question in the comment box if you have any question related to this topic you can ask the question in the comment box and today lots of participants are attending this session more than 100 participants wow. all over the world wow <laughs> that's good okay ma'am our first question is good evening ma'am what are the negative impact of stress on our health 
Oh, okay. Thank you for that question, Sir Flomi. Flom, is that right? Mr. Saldiejo. Okay, so there are a lot of negative impacts stress can actually do to our health. That um, First, just like what I mentioned, it may actually lead to depression. Um, and you, we all know that depression can actually make our health deteriorate. Like it can uh, give us a lot of physical symptoms like headache, uh, also heart condition if there is, um, and it, uh, it can also worsen um, any physical uh, conditions that we already have. Aside from that, of course, um, it may actually lead us not to have a good amount of sleep. It will cause us to lose our, our appetite and all the other symptoms depression has. Okay, that's why we really have to address stress before it gets worse. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, we are still waiting for your question. And our next question is, how do I prevent panic attacks? Oh, okay. How do I prevent panic attacks? Okay. Well, this this serves another webinar <laughs> for us to discuss um, about panic attacks or panic disorder. Well, uh, what I've done, uh, what I shared with you a while ago, um, doing mindfulness activities like that and breathing exercises may actually help you to prevent panic attacks. Um, also, if it's severe, or if you're having problems controlling your um, your panic episodes, uh, you may consult to a mental health professional. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Our next question is, how do you ensure that stressful situation in your personal life don't affect your work performance? Okay, ensure that stressful situations in your person. Oh, okay. Um, a, a while ago uh, in my discussion, I actually mentioned that you have to be intentional about it. Okay, you have to really want to have a positive life. It's not something that will magically happen. You have to choose it. Okay, so um, in order for you not to, you know, mix personal and uh, in order for you not to affect, uh, in order for you not to have a problem with your work performance, okay, you really had to separate your personal life from work, okay? If you feel like um, somehow um, your problems are affecting your work performance, you have to pause for a while and really um, focus on what is happening right now, which is your reality. And if it is work, you have to focus on work. You have to really want to focus on it, even though it is very difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Our next question is, how can we able to maintain to stay calm when your body can't handle any more stress? How can we be able to maintain stay calm when your body cannot handle any more stress? Okay. Mm, take a rest. You you have to choose that. You have to take a break. You have to find some time to relax. Um, you may, um, your body requires a rest. Okay, so if if your if your body or if your mind is experiencing too much stress, okay, find some time to take a break. 
Okay, you have to stop what you're doing. You have to want to take a rest because if it's affecting everything, your functioning, your job, and all of it, okay, you have to you have to try and do your best to give your body what it deserves, which is a good rest. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Our next question is: What is the best way to avoid or lessen our sins? To get stress. Okay, find the root cause of your stress, <laughs> and then when you find it, try to do something about it, because that's the only way. Okay, if it, say for example, if you're, uh, if a, if there is a person who's causing you too much stress, then avoid that person at all costs move away from that person don't get close to that person because that person is causing you stress okay because you have to choose you have to want to go away from from the source of your stress yeah hmm? okay man our next question is can i ask why mostly of the victims of suicides are men? Okay, um, Miss Stephanie. Okay, um, I I don't know where you got this, but it wasn't mentioned actually that the mo most victims of suicides are men. It's just that actually I mentioned that women are mostly affected by it. Okay, but anyway, um, maybe what you're trying to ask is why men are those who actually commit suicide because they don't have too much outlet of their emotions. Like uh, women uh, tend to have you know, friends who they can talk to. Uh, they have ad other outlets that they can do for them to lessen their stress. But men doesn't have too much of that. Sometimes they keep it to themselves because it makes them feel like if they talk about it, they will look weak. Yeah. So perhaps um, that's the reason why uh, it's men who are mostly the ones who complete suicide. Thank you, ma'am. Our next question is, how can we cope and manage stress in the workplace if the source of your stress are from the so-called lying and backstabbing friends? Okay. Oh, yeah. That is, this is really terrible. We all experience this. There are people in the workplace that might actually cause us stress. Then it means they're not your friends. <laughs> okay. So try to avoid these people. They're not good people for you. Even if they talk behind you, you know what? Think about this. The reason why they are talking behind you is because simply because they are right behind you. You are ahead of them. So, yeah, that's the reason why they're doing that. Because it means you are better than them. You are, uh, they are, and they're just jealous of you. That's why they're doing that. So, if I were you, I will be very happy that these people are talking about me. It means that I'm famous, I'm better than them, and they have nothing good to do with their lives. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Next question is very interesting. Uh -huh. How to overcome trouble sleeping due to stress? Trouble sleeping due to stress. Okay. So I usually tell this to my clients uh, when they're having um, trouble sleeping. Okay. Um, do not eat too late, like late at night. Uh, say, for example, if you're going to have dinner, do it before you sleep, like before 6 p.m., okay? That's maybe the last uh, the last hour that you will be eating. And then um, walk a little, you know, do a little stretching before, before going to bed. Um, it is also good for you to have a warm bath before you go to sleep. Take a warm bath milk or a chamomile tea if you're lactose intolerant and then play um play white noises okay this usually helps in 
uh, and having a better sleep. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful presentation. There is no more question. Okay. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, uh -huh. thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your valuable knowledge with us. I hope our participants learn something new from you. Oh, thank you. And what is your last and final words for our participants? Okay, for my final words to our dear participants, thank you for attending tonight's um, webinar. I'm very happy to have you here. Um, thank you for wanting and being eager to learn. I hope that you will continue doing this. I hope that you will keep on learning, keep on studying, even though you are all professionals now. And also uh, to Institute of Global Professionals, thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my knowledge to everyone who wants to hear uh, about this topic. And I'm very happy and privileged to be here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, to our program name is Stress Management and Simple Coping Strategies. And to our certification code is IGP5445. The code is IGP5445. Please note that code to download your certificate. The code is IGP5445. Without code, no one is eligible for certificate. With code, you can claim your certificate anytime from our website. Our website address is edyzp.com. To download your e certificate, you have to go to our website. Our website address is edyzp.com. First of all, you have to create an account on our website. And after that, you have to enroll the program and after that you have to put the code and the code is igp5445 and finally you can download your certificate from our website after downloading your e certificate don't forget to celebrate with igp checking thank you everyone for your active participation in this session before ending the program, I request everyone to like our Facebook page and subscribe our YouTube channel for upcoming information. Thank you, everyone. Stay happy and stay safe.